welcome everyone to go with Gillette. We are sharing our San Francisco trip with you. We were there for a total of four days. And um, as you can see in the clip, we are just walking through the Miami International Airport. We were able to find a direct nonstop flight. The flight was about six hours. And if you are living in the Florida area, you can certainly find a good deal to San Francisco from the Miami International Airport. So I'm just showing the elevators. I don't know why, but we stayed at the Chancellor's Hotel in Union Square and it was so conveniently located to everything downtown. Um, I'm just showing a clip of us in the car heading over to Brenda's French um, Soul Food Restaurant. The food was overall pretty good. If you are interested in knowing what my husband or I ordered, go ahead and leave us a comment below and we'll share the information. Um, one thing I would say is when you are riding in a Lyft car or Uber car, uh, wear your seatbelt because the heels are pretty steep. So just showing you guys the layout of the restaurant. It is pretty uh, modest in my opinion. So yeah. So once we left Brenda's uh, soul food restaurant, we decided to walk to Lombard Street and the walk took about 36 minutes from the restaurant. And uh, I feel that walking to different landmarks within the city allows you to really experience the town. Um, unfortunately for us, our first day uh, consisted of rain and chill and the steep hills just was a struggle so we definitely got our steps in but overall the views were spectacular so i wanted to test out my photography skills so here are a few snippets of the different type of architectures that we came across on our way to Lombard Street. I do have a photo of a plant just to keep it fresh. And then we have um, an example of one of the steep streets. And now Lombard Street. If you are someone that is really into viewing the entire city, then coming here is definitely going to be a treat um we really enjoy the views here and um here are some more photos now with lombard street you have the option of walking down the street or you have the option of driving down we opted to walk down i feel that this gives uh anybody the opportunity to really experience lombard street um, but if you don't want to walk, that's perfectly fine. I think that you would get a good experience either way. Um, in a few seconds here, you will actually see my husband getting in front of me. He was actually showing me that his legs were shaking after walking for a period of time. Once we left Lombard Street, we decided to walk over to Fisherman's Wharf, but on our way there, we spotted a beautiful park called Fay Park. So we made a pit stop and um, took a few photos here. If you are into gazebos and fall colors, then this would be a um, wonderful stop for you to make if you decide to walk over to Fisherman's Wharf 
from Lombard Street. All right, so we left Fay Park and now we're heading to Fisherman's Wharf. This is just a clip of the area that we uh, stopped by on our way over. So on our way over to Fisherman's Wharf, we stopped by this place called The Cannery, which I can summarize it as a mini mall. There were a few shops in there and the Art Institute is stabilized there. So if you just want to stop by this place before you get to Fisherman's Wharf, um, it's a good mini stop as well. All right, so we finally made it and before you get to the pier area, you are going to stop by a number of shops. And so I'm just showing the different shops that are there. Um, Fisherman's Wharf is a place that has so many things for you to see. Right now I'm showing you the boats that are near the pier, a few more restaurants. And um, just know that once you get to Fisherman's Wharf, you have to have your walking shoes on because you are going to be doing a lot of walking. All right, so now I am showing you guys a few shops that we passed by on our way to this place called Musée Mécanique. And I can describe this place as a antique arcade game center. Um, in this place, you can find a number of penny games or penny arcade games, as they would like to call it, uh, aligned accordingly inside. Now, if you are into vintage games, this would be a treat for you. My husband and I are not really into the penny games, but we were there just for the experience. So I am showing you guys the different games that were there um, and I'm heading to the back of the museum. But before that, let's just snap ourselves a little bit. Now in the back of the museum, there is a pier and from the pier you can see Alcatraz. And so once I open the door, Alcatraz is going to be to the far right. There is also the view of a submarine as well as a torpedo that you will see in a few. And that's the ferry that will pass by Alcatraz. Okay, now here is the submarine up close. And then I'll turn around and quickly show the torpedo. All right, so we finally arrived to the Fisherman Wharf's landmark. Just showing you guys some more shops that we passed by as we were walking throughout the pier. So you could see some fresh crab, some more things. And then I found a box of live crab, so that was pretty cool. So we passed by a well-known place called Boudin and they are known for their sourdough bread. 
Um, although we didn't go inside, I'm sure whoever stops by will enjoy what they have to offer. We also stopped by this place called Frankie's and we had some live oysters. Now, I'm not a fan of oysters, but um, for the first time, it was okay. Now, once we left Fisherman's Wharf, we headed to Chinatown. And as you can see from the screen, this is part one. As I mentioned earlier in the video, it was drizzling and it was cold, so we were tired. And we ended up finishing uh, the rest of the tour of Chinatown, um, I believe, on day three. So um, I do recommend stopping by the Dragon's Gate. And that is located uh, between Grants Avenue and Bush Street. And Chinatown was beautiful. You can certainly spend a whole day in Chinatown just being mesmerized by the architect, the culture, and the colors and the food. Um, I purchased a few things in different shops and they were pretty inexpensive. And um, I'm not sure what this is, but it looks so pretty. So I just snapped a photo. Um, I stopped by this place called Good Monk Cog Bakery and ordered some pork buns. Now here is just a snippet of Union Square. Now day two consisted of us visiting a few places and the first place that we went to was the Palace of Fine Arts and this place is located closer to the Golden Gate Bridge. Overall the place was beautiful. Uh, the columns were just mesmerizing and there's a dome here I just can't think of the name at the moment but this is a great place to visit if you want a great photo if you just want to relish in nature this is a go-to place um, we took a few photos here I'll just include a few snippets but yeah wonderful place and the weather was perfect So once we left the Palace of the Fine Arts, we headed to Chrissy Fields, which is about a five minute walk away from the palace. From there, we went to breakfast at Sweet Maple um, and their millionaire bacon is a must try. It was so delicious, so good, so delicious. I just can't even explain it even better. So we had breakfast here and then afterwards we walked about 11 minutes to Japantown, which is pretty small. Um, we weren't able to eat at the different restaurants that I selected because we went to Japantown on Christmas and a number of the restaurants were closed. So uh, we walked about 22 minutes to Alamo Square, which is adjacent to the Painted Ladies. And so if you are unfamiliar to what the Painted Ladies are, they are a series of homes that were featured in the introduction of Full House. So it was really cool to see them up close. Now further um, down and to our left, we have Alamo Square, which gives a beautiful view of the city. And that is one thing that I liked about San Francisco is when you are situated in an elevated place, you can get a very good view of the city. Now, once we left Alamo Square, we headed back to Chinatown to finish our tour. And uh, we stopped by a bakery and grabbed a few treats. And then once we left 
the bakery we headed to the fortune cookie factory now unbeknownst to me i didn't know that i couldn't record until afterwards so you will see in a clip shortly here where a lady is looking at me like oh no you didn't well i didn't know so here in the fortune cookie factory if you pay a dollar you can write your own fortune and they will encapsulate it in a cookie for you um, and they will let you sample a few um, fortune cookies here so it's pretty good now once we left chinatown we headed to the pier as well as rincon park so from here to my left you can see the financial district and then in front of me there is a marketplace that has a number of good restaurants that i didn't try but i heard the food is really good there so from the pier we could see the bay bridge and if you go down the um long ramp so to speak you can see um just like the different views like treasure island and so forth so once we left rincon park and the pier we headed to twin peaks which uh, is really really cold um, i'm sure during the summer it's not as cold but once we got here we were like we're so ready to go home but the view is beautiful you get a 360 view of the city and uh, twin peaks definitely has two peaks and you can walk up the stairs and um, just take wonderful pictures of the city so this is day three and on day three we did a wine country tour with the tour company um, we went to Napa and Sonoma Valley now I'm not really um, a heavy wine drinker but I definitely got my dose of wine that day and I'm just showing you guys the uh, first valley or first wine place that we um, arrived to and I'm telling you you have to attend one of these tours because it was just so breathtaking to see the vineyards and the sculptures and to sample everything it was just delicious now with this specific wine tour group we were able to visit about four wineries and that is pretty good for the price that we paid for our ticket with the tour it included a light breakfast as well as lunch the only caveat is that you had to pay for each wine tasting session and the prices were not too um profound it was pretty reasonable overall we met some wonderful people there it was a good experience now this is day four um luckily for us we were flying out later that night so we took full advantage of the morning as well as early afternoon. Right now, I am just showing you guys the street. Uh, that is actually Powell Street. We were making our way towards the um, first pickup location for the trolleys. So we stayed off of Powell Street and Sutter Street. But if you head south on Powell to Market Street, you can actually wait in line for the trolley that will stop at different um, landmarks and then eventually it will stop at Fisherman's Wharf where you can get off and visit some more. So we're just walking down the street right now. Now one thing that I am going to state about catching the trolleys is getting to the pickup stations a little bit early. Um, I believe they start operating at 6 a.m. in the morning. We actually ended up waiting about an hour and 30 minutes before we were able to hop on the trolley. So a huge sacrifice just for the experience. Now, once we got to Fisherman's Wharf, we did a little bit more touring and then we caught a lift to the Japanese tea garden. Now, if you are really into nature and colors, you are going to love this place. I felt so at peace here. It is so tranquil and everyone is so friendly. You are going to love it. Now, we did have some tea at the cafe, which serves light sandwiches and different assortments of teas. And then within the garden, there is also a gift shop. And as you can see to your right there, there are a number of artists who are sitting outside of the gift shop and they are going to write different fortunes for you if you so desire.
all right guys so this officially ends the video once we left the japanese tea garden we had to head back to the hotel to catch the shuttle to the airport but overall this was a good experience we did a lot of sightseeing which is what you do when you visit a new city there are a number of restaurants that i did not include in this video for the sake of time but if you are interested go ahead and leave a comment below we did um on wednesday night eat at a place called ken kwao I'm sure I'm butchering the name, I'm so sorry, but it was a Thai eatery place and the food was amazing, life-changing to say the least. So go ahead and follow us on Instagram. All the details will be in the description box and if you have any questions for us, go ahead and leave it below or you can send us an email. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time.